we have alliance versus horde faction strengthens and weaknesses in season of discovery so world of warcraft classic season of discovery has brought many changes into classic world of warcraft including new raids items and a whole lot of new class spells through the rune system but some things truly never change it's always been a debate whether the horde or the lions are the most powerful faction in this article we'll examine the strengths weaknesses and differences of the two factions in season of discovery when we talk about comparing the lions and the horde there are two main things that differentiate them the first and most important is that in the vanilla version of the game before the burning crusade expansion only the horde had the shaman class and only the alliance had the paladin class and the same holds true for Season of Discovery. Both class offer considerable buffs to the party and can fulfill the damage dealer, healer, or tank role. But in so very different ways. Well, I mean, Paladin was always the better thing, right? Paladin with Salvation for the Vanilla Raids. Uh, Paladin with uh, all the Blessings and so on, right? The second difference is the racial abilities. So I think uh, Alliance was better PvE. And Horde probably was better PvP. Am I right? Because there were like uh, advantages on both sides and disadvantages. The second difference is the racial abilities available to the races for each faction. Powerful uh, activated abilities like the human racial perception. Perception is only viable versus one class, man. It's not that great. Undead, the will of Forsaken. Yeah, Will of the Forsaken was for more classes because it was Charm, Fear, and Sleep Effect, so, yeah. Significantly hindering their ability to control the undead player. The racial bonuses just don't influence players versus players combat, though. And the historically strong PV human racial sword. Yeah. Yeah, the, the sword spec and the mace spec for humans was, like, so huge when it came to DPS. Because uh, when you level, when you're early on, it doesn't really matter that much. But when you're talking about uh, huge DPS at level 60 with all the world buff and all the scaling, this made a huge difference between uh, humans and um, dwarves, for example. Having access to paladins or shamans is the biggest difference between alliance and horde in Season of Discovery. Shamans provide multiple powerful totems buffs to players in the same party as them, where Paladins offer Blessing buffs to each member of a raid. Usually a player can benefit from 3, sometimes 4 Blessing at once, meaning that even a full raid of 40 people can be fully buffed by Paladins. Conversely, many of the Shaman buffs are party-wide, meaning each 5-person raid will receive a Shaman buff. In larger 40-man raids they might come in the future, Paladins are far more efficient in taking up fewer raid slots for providing all the buffs needed. In smaller sizes, shamans are more efficient, having a very high impact on the single party they are placed within. At the moment, with the 20 player raids, the efficiency of these buffing classes are quite balanced. Shamanistic Rage. And if you, I'm, I'm raiding with a mage in Sunken Temple. If you have like 6 shamans or 5 shamans in your party, you don't even have, in your raid I mean, you don't even have to stop drinking. <laughs> you just keep on going. A very contentious issue related to Paladins and Shamans is the power of Seal of Martyrdom compared to Shamanistic Rage. For quite a while, casters and healers on the Horde had access to significantly more mana than Alliance players thanks to the immense amount of mana returned by Shamanistic Rage compared to the partly mana gained from Seal of Martyrdom, especially since some players didn't even use the Seal. With recent changes in 16th of April, Blizzard, Blizzard has flipped the script, giving a massive buff to the mana restore from Seal of Martyrdom. With this change, it is now the, the Alliance raids with more mana than they know what to do with. Each Paladin using Seal of Martyrdom is generating mana at the rate that they would take almost three Shamans using Shamanistic Rage to achieve during boss fights. In that same update post, Blizzard seems to recognize that continually buffing mana generation cheapens the resource and says they will revisit the rebalance these massively powerful mana restoration abilities in the future. Well, yeah, it's true, because whenever um, you buff like the mana regeneration, things like mana potions become like useless. Things like uh, mage blood potions which restore mana become useless. Um, wizard oils that restore mana, mana oils, right, become useless. Even a mana regen enchants that you put in stone 
So, uh, I don't think it's... The, the, the problem is that in raids, everyone is performing okay with mana, and then when the raids stop, some classes are really struggling with mana. And uh, you know who, who started struggling with mana outside of raids? Mage. <laughs> Which used to be like the one that was dealing the most okay with mana in classic. Now it's struggling outside of raids. Okay, and then we have like a, a couple of specialization here. They're talking about sword spec and mace spec versus the orc blood flurry. So increases base melee attack power by 25% for 15 seconds. Reducing, reduces your healing by 50. The dwarf has a stone form, which immunity to bleed, poison and disease effect, which is pretty okay, right? Blood Fury and Berserking, or Controls. Yeah, are some of the best picks for uh, damage dealers. Mm -hmm. And then you have Escape Artist and Stone Form for Alliance. With the reduced significance on the human racial bonus and only conditional usefulness of many other Alliance racial bonus, many players feel like Horde is the clear choice for a performance-oriented player. While not all players care about these types of performance differences, there are so many players who do. Those players often feel concerned into one or two choices for their character. I don't know exactly why people nowadays want to be like, everyone wants to be equally balanced and equally have that and that. It's fine if you don't have like sword spec, whatever. I mean, I, I was never bothered by racials. I always played the faction that I wanted to. But it seems like now, people that are trying to go for that extra 0.1%, they're going to be able to have like similar um, weapon choices. Apparently, at level 60, you're going to be able to choose what kind of weapon skill you get, or racial, or stuff like that. I always thought that uh, Classic was great. Classic Vanilla, we're talking about Vanilla, this is not Season of Discovery was great because of the differences between Alliance and Horde, because of the lack of balance, to put it that way. PvP was mostly a rock, paper, scissor thingy. A mage will always like beat a warrior in a PvP situation. Um, a rogue will always beat like a clothy and stuff like that. It depends now. A warrior would beat a rogue, for example. And um, that was the thing. And it, it was okay. I mean, I, I think that was the magic where it comes from. If you make all of them, like, be similar, I think it's going to lose a bit of the magic. Everyone have good racials. I think the good racials are only good because there are a couple of weak ones, you know? Hey. We'll see how this will look at level 60. I'm actually looking forward for phase 4. Make sure to subscribe, guys, to the channel. Find me live at twitch.tv slash frostadamos. And um, until next time, stay frosty. Bye-bye.